Hello everybody, good evening, how are you? I hope you are well, I hope you are keeping safe, I hope you are getting into the new groove of the East lockdown, you know, obviously not going too crazy. I mean, there's not a lot we can do, but at least we can meet up with one friend, I think, for a walk, a socially distant walk. How have we always been able to do that? I can't... Um, I can't remember. Anyway, so welcome to another episode, another exciting episode of Tuesday Rants with Ochoco. Guys, we've been going on strong for, you know, since August, you know, you know, and I took a bit of a break in December. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. Thank you so much for those people who keep logging in every Tuesday and engaging with the content, but on my page and just, you know, on the live, I do appreciate it. You could be doing anything with your Tuesday evenings, but you choose to spend it with me. So I am thankful for that. As per usual, please be reminded that you can log off if you need to, you don't need to stay on. I always save the videos to my Instagram page so that you can have a look at it later on, okay? Now, if you don't know, I have written a five-day devotional about women and the identity of a woman. And just, you know, it's not about me telling you what your identity is. No, it's nothing like that. It's more about you discovering who you are, who God says you are, by spending time with him. So the whole heart of that journal or devotional is to get you to ask deeper questions and to just really spend time thinking and reflecting on who you believe you are, but even more importantly, on who God has called you to be as a woman, as a daughter of God, um, as a bright shining light in this world that we live in, okay? And, you know, seeing that it was sort of Women's Week, International Women's Day, you know, and Women's Sunday, I just thought it would be a nice little gift from me to you. It is completely free, obviously, so, you can download your free copy from the link in my bio, okay? There's also loads of other cool stuff that's on there. I've got a, you know, a devotional on intimacy with God because that's my biggest thing. That's the thing that excites me a lot. That's why I started talking really on here. Um, you know, and we're going to be talking a little bit about it today. I, I, I wrote that devotional because I wanted to, it was about, Valen, it was, it was around the time of Valentine's Day and, um, you know, I know that a lot of us are trying to figure out what love is or when, you know, committed relationships or we're single and I just wanted to share, you know, something to give you a closer um, relation, something to bring you into a closer connection with Father God, the Holy Spirit and Jesus. So that's on there as well, go into my bio, you can download your free copy, it's all free, and um, get into it and hopefully it blesses you. Okay, so if you are new to Tuesday Rants, my name is Ochiko and I basically talk about anything really. However, if I'm being honest, there's only two things I've been talking about. Um, first one is relationship and my dating life. I've basically been on here, talked about online dating a lot. You can go over to my IG stories and you can see a lot of all the stuff that um, I talk about. Um, but most you know, importantly, the most important thing to me, the most important relationship I have in my life right now is my relationship with God. And um, I'm on here and I talk a lot about that as well, okay? More recently, I started a series called The Secret Place Collective. And this is the last episode, guys. To catch up on all the other stuff, please head over to my highlights and you'll see all the videos that I've made on the Secret Place Collective. So the Secret Place Collective is basically tools that have helped me grow closer to God in my secret place. It is called the Secret Place just because it's a time you withdraw, you be on your own, and you spend time with God 
Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So I was just sharing things that I've practiced. We've talked about the Holy Spirit. We've talked about speaking in tongues. We've talked about prayer. We've talked about praise. You know, we've talked about Bible study. So these are all the things, you know, Christians do invest time in. And these are things that we, you know, practice and gets us closer to the Lord. And today I'm going to talk about my all-time favorite practice absolute all-time favorite practice the thing that i believe led me to falling in love with the lord and it's worship so this term worship is so broad right um i'm gonna just look at it basically from my perspective how i've lived my life you know worshiping the lord and i'll bring in one scripture which, you know, I feel encompasses what worship truly is, okay? Um, so let's let's start, you know, I'm just going to dive in and talk a little bit about myself here. From a young age, say, I don't know, 12, 13, I started to lead worship in my local church. So what that means is during the church service, there will be a little segment where we all spend time together singing songs, fast songs, slow songs, and it allowed us to engage our hearts. It was usually about God, maybe sometimes our feelings about God, sometimes it was about scripture, things that we believe that were true about God, right? So that's what we usually term as worship. And so I started leading praise and worship, you know, at a young age, fell in love with it. My dad was a worship leader or is a worship leader, musician as well. I got into playing the guitar and to be honest, guys, I decided I was going to be a worship leader. I wanted to be a worship leader. That's all I wanted to do. Um, And I started going hard after it, you know, I... <sighs> I logged on to like, I said, I mean, I still follow a lot of, you know, worship artists, worship leaders, Tasha Cobbs, Jen Johnson, Stephanie Gretzinger, my all time fave, Jonathan and Melissa Helser, Kirk Franklin, Jonathan Mac Reynolds, you know, the, the, the list is long and I, I'll try so hard to learn all the songs and, you know, all that good stuff. So that was worship for me. And um, I remember thinking to myself once, like, oh, okay, if I was going to be a worship leader, you know, profession, well, not professionally, but if I was going to lead worship, I wanted to go through some sort of training, right? I wanted to learn under some people, like people who were doing this stuff. How did they do it? And that began my journey. I started to explore. I started to listen to a lot of teachings on worship on YouTube. I even went ahead and signed up for Worship You, which is like Bethel School of Worship, basically. And guys, I learned a lot of good stuff. And the most important thing I learned is worship is not about being on stage, right? It's not about how loud you can sing. It's not about other people. Worship is only about two people. Well, four really. You, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Father God. Worship is such a, an intimate experience. It's, it's an outpouring of love from your heart to the Father. And it's a place where you can receive God's love as well. I've often heard people teach that worship is not about you, it's only about God. I'd like to disagree. That's like saying two people in a committed relationship that it's only about one person. It's only about how much love I can give that one person. I don't think that's true. I think in a committed relationship, for example, a marriage relationship, there is covenant. One person gives, the other person receives and gives back. And so the love cycle is complete. When we take our time to worship, it's the same thing we do with Father God. We pour our hearts to him and he pours his love out to us, you know. And so worship is such a moment where you can be completely real. You can be completely honest. You can sing loud. You can sing low. The most important thing is that you are bringing your whole heart to the table. And sometimes that's not easy. Sometimes you just want to lock yourself away. Sometimes life has been 
disappointing, you know, or things have been hard. Worship gives us a, 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 a permission to go to the Lord and allow him to heal our hearts. So we often, you know, categorize worship as singing. There is a lot of singing in worship, but it's more about your heart posture. So you can go into your place of worship and be quiet and just ask the Lord to fill the room and to come and be present with you. That is still worship. It is just a place where you and the Lord are connecting as much as you can. In fact, all the things you do in your life to get closer to God, all the things you do to respond to the love that he's pouring out to you continually is worship. Some of us choose to express it as dance. Some of us choose to express it as song. Some of us choose to express it as silence. As long as you are com committing your heart to the Lord in a space, I, I believe that that is um, worship. I believe that that is worship. So the scripture I wanted to share with you was John 4 verse 23 I believe and this is where Jesus is speaking to the Samaritan woman for those of you who know the story the Samaritan woman you know was she was sort of an outcast in society she'd been with a couple of men about seven in total and the person she was with at the moment wasn't her husband and then she went to the well at the daytime she went to the well in a time where there would not be loads of people at the well to fetch water so that no one would see her but jesus was at the well and he was thirsty and he said to her you know, give me something to drink. And she was Samaritan. She's like, oh, we don't talk to you, blah, 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 blah. And it was a whole big discussion. And Jesus said to her, there is a time that is coming. Dip him in spirit and in truth. So for me, there's two things that are there that point it out to, you know, you worship in spirit and you worship in truth. Some people discuss, uh, you know, some Bible commentaries think, you know, Spirit there refers to your specific spirit, your soul, how you bring yourself to the table when you worship, rather than just a series of actions that you do. So it's not necessarily about going to church and just going through the motions, but bringing your whole heart to the table. And to worship in truth, I believe, is in the knowledge of who God is, being backed by scripture, knowing fully who he is or trying to understand who he is, using that sort of mindset to, to, to sing to the Lord or to be with the Lord is worship, okay? Okay, I'm gonna share a bit of my experience. So, as I said earlier, I was gung-ho, like, I really wanna be a worship leader and all that. But the Lord took me on this journey where he began to speak to my heart. I didn't feel qualified to sing. I wasn't, you know, I didn't feel confident at all. And um, I did like my voice, but I just didn't think it was good enough. And, you know, I mean, I'm not necessarily, I'm not leading worship anywhere now. And I just, it was just so much surrounding it, like performance. I want it to be really good, but I wasn't as good, right? I have so many worship leader friends and guys, you should hear their voice, you know? And I just kept comparing myself constantly to these guys and I'll hear the Lord say you know in a quiet voice he'll say to me oh Chuka I love the sound of your voice and I'll be like you know I never believed it and he keeps saying I love the sound of your voice and to me I was like how can you love the sound of my voice it's not epic you know it's not like so and so's voice you know how can that be pleasing to you but he'll say it over and over and over and over again. And I began to realize that God is not necessarily concerned about my pitch or my tone when I sang to him. He was concerned. He was more pleased that I came to sing to him and he would rejoice over me. And there'll be so much joy in my heart. There'll be so much love in my heart each time I sang to him. So I could go into the presence of God angry. I could go into the presence of God sad. I could go into the presence of God depressed. 
But the moment I started to sing to him, you know, the things that I was feeling, the thing, you know, songs that I knew, I would feel my emotions begin to rise. But I knew that it wasn't from me. I knew that it was from the Lord. And I could feel his affirmation over me. I love you. I love you. I love you until I believed his words. So each time I go into the presence of God to worship, I always come out refreshed, renewed. And this is why I say you cannot tell me that worship is only just about God. It is a place of beautiful exchange. You give to the Lord and he gives you right back. You sing to him and he sings over you. The Bible does recall that God dances over us. He laughs over, and he sings over us songs of love, songs of deliverance. Um, Psalms even records this. Speaking about Psalms, David, absolute legend, King David, I think is one of the people in the Bible that describes or embodies the spirit of worship so much. Like you will start reading a psalm and David will be saying, woe is me, woe is me, but God is good. I will sing. And then he'll say, awake, oh my soul, awake, oh my soul. Let all that is within me praise his holy name. He'll come in feeling depressed, but he will remember who God is and he'll begin to sing about God. And at the end, you know, towards the end of the psalm, it records, you know, such an uplift in his mood and an uplift in the way that he describes or relates to God. Now, Here's what I think. The more you worship, the more you spend time with God, the more the presence of the, of God becomes irresistible to you. It be, you become homesick for the presence of God. It's like you want to return back to him each time. Um, there is a scripture that David says, I'd rather be a, a gatekeeper in the house of my God than anywhere else, you know? And there's also, there's in, I think, I believe it's still in that same Psalm. I, I think it's Psalm 64. Where can I go to hide from your presence? Where can I go to hide from your love? I would rather lay, you know, like a bird, set my nest where you are. Your presence is basically all I need. So there's so many Psalms that David writes, as the deer pants for water, so does my soul long for you. There is that expression of love, right? I think worship is that place where we express real deep love to Father God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus. So I want to encourage you to, to explore in your secret place, even when it's difficult, because sometimes we try to, we go into our secret place, we want to connect with God, but there seems to be barriers, right? It could be worries, things that we might be going through in our life, or, you know, we're just not in the mood. I want to encourage you to push past that barrier until you connect with God, right? So even when it gets distracting in your head, you know, just be like, okay, I'll deal with this later. Just sort of move those thoughts aside and just keep going until you can feel your spirit rising till it connects uh, with the heart of the Father. That's my encouragement to you this week. Now, I've talked about worship, but I would like to talk about singing. A lot of people think that they can't sing. I don't think that's true. I don't think you need to be like an opera superstar to sing to the Lord, you know? You're in your room, you're in your, you know, no one's there, no, it's just you and God. And, you know, I can confirm that God loves the sound of your voice. And there is no better place to start singing to him, you know? Start singing, sing of your, you know, and again, in the Psalms, there's a lot of scripture that's written by Moses, uh, written by the sons of, I uh, can't remember their names now, and David, encouraging the people of God to sing. You know, God wants to hear your voice. He wants you to sing to him. And it says, sing to the Lord a new song. So you can sing a song that is completely made up by you to him. So you could be feeling very thankful to God and you could just, Come out with a song, allow the song to carry your emotions to the Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you that you were kind. Thank you for being with me. Oh, I love you. I love you. And that's what we tend to call a spontaneous song. A song that comes from within, from the belly of your stomach. No one's taught you the song, but you're feeling an intense emotion and words don't just carry it. And you just need to bring a bit of melody to that, you know, to those words, to the Lord. He loves it. He loves the sound of your voice. I tell you, the Lord rewards you when you sing to him. He just comes and he just rests. He loves authentic worship where you you're not performing for anybody you're just being there with him you know so if i were you i'll try it obviously you can start by singing other people's songs sing them to your heart's content as loud as you can in your room in privacy of your room and then you can push it a little bit and sing your own song here's a little interesting bit if you speak in tongues, you can allow that to translate into song as well. You can allow song melody to rise up from within you, to lift your voice or to communicate the depths of your heart to the Lord. I hope you try it today. I hope, I hope you can try it. I hope, you know, you, you, you make out time and just engage and not really care not really care sing a song right so that's the spontaneous song i want to talk a little bit about the prophetic song now the prophetic song is is a, it, it is when you sing out what god is saying to you okay so prophetic song could be prophecy first of all prophecy is basically what god is saying in a moment it could be about you it could be about somebody else it could be about a season it could be about a nation um but it's basically what god is saying to the world right or to you or to the you know it's god's voice on on the earth now when you prophesy you're basically saying you believe what god is saying and you release that into the earth right it could be foretelling. It could be like, oh, I'm God is saying he's going to do this. He's going to do this. He's going to do this. OK, and it could be forth telling where you actually pronounce it, you know, into the earth like an encouragement. Right now, the prophetic song is simply just that, but with song. So here's an example of a prophetic song that I've written. Well, God's spoken to me and I basically sang it out until it became a song, okay? So I was in this place where I was with the Lord and I could see in my mind's eye, right? It was almost like a vision. I could see the Lord. I couldn't really make out his features, but he looked like a warrior, right? And we we're going through these woods and he was going before me and he was clearing the path for me. And immediately my spirit, I knew what he was saying. He was saying, I am your warrior king, right? So those are prophetic words specifically to me. And I started singing it into my room and I sing it every now and again. I'm, you are warrior king, you fight for me. You are warrior king, you protect your own. You are warrior king, you fight for your own. You go before me, you are behind me, you're all around me, no evil comes close. You go before me, you are around me, you are beside me, no evil comes close. I sound a little bit pitchy, right? But it's not about the tone of the voice. Now, when I sang that song into the atmosphere, there was a charge in my spirit. And I knew that nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing could get me down that day because I knew that God was fighting for me. The beauty about the prophetic song is that it's always backed up with scripture. You know, it is always backed up with scripture. And 
it does in the bat in bible we you know we describe god as the battle axe the lord is my battle axe the lord is you know he goes before us in battle the whole of you know the old testament describes how god is basically fighting for the israelites the story of joshua and caleb how they take down jericho because the lord is on their side the story of gideon how they destroy the enemy kingdom right because god is on their side as one king so for me there was scriptural backing I wasn't just you know singing random words but it was a prophetic song for me in that moment right sometimes you can have a prophetic song in the church among other people and but right now we're in a situation where we're not singing as much in church because of covid so this is such an important time for us to invest in our secret place, you know, the world has shown us now that yes, meeting together is so important, but we need to ensure, we need to invest in ourselves, on our own, with the Lord, through the help of the Holy Spirit. You know, like it has never been more important to define your relationship with God outside of everybody else outside of onlookers outside of the wider church community to really really stake your claim and say yes god is my god god is good god is my warrior king god is god is my father i have a personal relationship with him so yeah that's my little tidbits about worshiping in spirit worshiping in truth singing the spontaneous song singing the prophetic song and um i want to encourage you to sing a prophetic song listen to what god is saying to you in your private place in your secret place you know is he calling you bold if he's calling you bold sing it over yourself the lord calls me bold the lord calls me strong therefore i will move i will advance sing it loud until your inner environment can is respond is responding to that word sing it loud until all of who you are believes in who god is calling you to be god bless you guys god bless you guys god bless you guys i'm gonna just say a little prayer for you um, and I just want to say thank you for hopping into my little, you know, spiel about worship. And um, remember that, you know, God loves the sound of your voice. And worship is about you and him and that intimate place where you exchange with each other. Holy Spirit, I thank you for everybody who's hopped on here and, you know, watched my live session, you know, this live session today. Thank you for everybody who will end up watching this. Lord, I ask that you give them an encounter. I ask that I ask that you remind them that you love ooh, the sound of their voice. Holy Spirit, make them bold to sing out loud the things that you are saying about them in their rooms, in their workplace, until their whole environment is changed and atmospherically never the same, until their spirit completely believes all the things that you are saying about them. Thank you, Jesus. I ask that you bless everybody on here, that they have a great week and a prosperous week. In your name, Jesus. Amen. It's been great, guys. Thank you so much for hopping on. Until next week, it's been an amazing series. I've loved every single episode. Don't forget to check it out on my stories. And who knows what we're going to be doing next week. Stay tuned. Bye.